Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the atmospheric stability. By the end of the video you will know why sometimes we have these stratus clouds low level and sometimes we have these huge vertical clouds like the cumulonimbus. Okay? We're gonna jump into the whiteboard in order to make sure you understand what are the mechanisms behind the atmospheric stability. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1 rotates. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot, so if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video because this really helps the channel to grow. Okay, so what is the atmospheric stability? First of all, the atmospheric stability is the tendency of the atmosphere to promote or to inhibit or to kill the vertical movement of an air mass. Okay? In order to understand in full what is this atmospheric stability, we need to make sure that we know that within the air, within the atmosphere, we've got this mass of air that has got a different characteristic compared to the surrounding air. So you've got the earth, you've got the air, the atmosphere, but within the air you have some mass of air, like you can imagine them like a, a bubbles, for example, and that which this bubble, this mass of air, they have a different characteristics compared to the surrounding air. They might be colder, they might be warmer, so they might be less dense, more dense, so heavier or lighter. Normally, a mass of air that is warmer than uh, the, uh, the surrounding uh, air, okay, is less dense, thus is lighter. So a mass of air, let's, let's imagine like a, a, a bubble, okay, that is warmer than the surrounding air, has the tendency to rise, okay. So in order to understand what, it, what is this, let's jump into the whiteboard and let's make some examples. By looking at the whiteboard in here, okay, I, I'm gonna draw the um, the air surface, okay, and let's say in this case we've got water in here, so you have let's say the sea, all right, and then you have a road that is next to the sea, okay. So this is the air surface, and what happens is that the sun normally, okay, this is a very nice sun, okay, <laughs> sorry for my drawing, okay. Anyway, the sun will warm up the water and the air surface in general, and then the air surface will actually release this heat, this heat energy in the air. Thus, the air that is on top of the air surface will warm up. That's how actually we warm up the atmosphere, okay? However, as you can already see, what happens is that if the sun will warm up the water and the, sur and the asphalt at the same time, what will happen is that the asphalt is going to have a higher temperature compared to the water because the water has a tendency to absorb more heat and the, uh, the asphalt won't absorb that much of it, so it will warm up very quickly. So what will happen is that the air on top of the, uh, the, air on top of the sea will be colder compared to the air on top of the asphalt, okay, on top of the road, all right? So as you can see already, and this is the atmosphere, as you can see we've got the atmosphere in this example, we have a mass of air on top of the, of the asphalt, which is warmer, and then we have a, a mass of air on top of the water, which is colder than the mass of air on top of the asphalt. So in order, why I'm telling you all of this? Because it is very important that you understand that the atmosphere is not a constant, nice and mass of air, huge mass of air, it is not like that. The atmosphere is composed by colder mass of air, warmer mass of air, they, they, are, they have different density and so on. So you need to really understand that within the atmosphere you have different air masses and different compositions of humidity, density, temperature and so on. Okay? So now that this is clear, we can actually talk about something very important. So, I made already a separate video where I talk about the uh, environmental lapse rate, the dry adiabatic lapse rate and the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. And I strongly recommend you to watch that because in there you really understand what happens to the mass of air when it climbs. Okay? However, very quickly, the, adiabat the environmental lapse rate is the change in temperature with the height. So if you look at the whiteboard in there, again, we go on the page number two. And as you can see, okay, the environmental lapse rate, okay, like in this case in here, ELR, environmental lapse rate, is the change in temperature with the altitude. According to the standard atmosphere, okay, the environmental lapse rate, the generic atmosphere lapse rate, means that the temperature will decrease every 1,000 feet in, in elevation by 2 degrees. So if on the mean sea level the temperature is 15 degrees, what will happen is that at 1,000 feet higher, the temperature will be 13 degrees. So every 1,000 feet will be, the temperature will be lower by 2 degrees, okay? So this is crucial to understand the atmospheric stability, okay? Then we have 
the uh, dry lapse rate, which is the different uh, how much the temperature will drop, will decrease with the altitude of an air mass that is dry, that is not saturated, that is still not uh, a cloud. Okay. Then we've got the S, and this is the DLR. Okay, guys. And then we have the SLR, which is the saturated lapse rate, which is the temperature change with the altitude of an air mass that is saturated, that gets condensated, that become a cloud. Okay. And then lastly. We have the dew point in this slide, which is the temperature at which a mass of air that is dry, so it's not condensed, if, we, if you cool down that mass of air to that temperature, that mass of air will actually become a cloud and condensate. Okay, and I made a separate video where I talk about dew point. All right, so now in order to understand the atmospheric stability, we really need to understand what is the environmental lapse rate compared to the uh, lapse rate of an air mass because that is crucial. Okay. Because let's say in this example we are talking about a stable stable atmosphere and as you can see here on the left at zero feet on the mean sea level the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, 1000 feet above we've got 13 degrees because according to the standard atmosphere every thousand feet the temperature will go down by 2 degrees. At 2000 feet 11 degrees and so on. Beautiful. Now let me ask you a question. What will happen if you have a mass of air that is in here let's say at 1000 feet. Okay. Let's, let's draw here yeah, a mass over, just a mass over, it's not a cloud, just a mass over, okay? That has got a temperature of 18 degrees, for example. What would you happen to that mass over? Since that mass of air is warmer compared to the uh, surrounding air, okay, the air at 1000 feet, okay, the air that you've got in here, which is a temperature of 13 degrees, that means that the mass of air is warmer compared to the temperature that is around it. And what will happen since it's warmer, it's lighter, it will climb because it's lighter compared to the surrounding air. Okay, so this is crucial to understand. Okay, so now let's see what happened on a stable environment. On the top there, you see the sun. Okay, the sun will warm up the air surface as we explained earlier. So it will warm up the sea and the road in this case. Okay, now a runway, an asphalt. Okay, so what will happen is that let's say that the air on top of the runway, this mass of air in here on top of the runway will have a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius, which is warmer compared to the temperature of the sea. Why? Because as we said before, the asphalt gets warmer quicker. Okay. So since the mass of air at the mean sea level is 17 degrees, what will happen is that it will start climbing because it's lighter, it's less dense than dust is lighter. And since this mass of air is dry, it will go, the temperature will decrease as well, and it will decrease at, at a rate of 3 degrees per uh, thousand feet. Thus, it will get to the first 1000 feet, so it will be here, this mass of air will be slightly bigger because as it climbs, it, it expands, okay? And it will have a temperature of 14 degrees Celsius, okay? So, as you can see, at 1000 feet, okay, this mass of air uh, composition will have 14 degrees at 1000 feet. However, the temperature around this mass over at 1000 feet will be 13 degrees. Thus, as you can see in here, this is crucial to understand, guys, is that this mass of air will be still warmer compared to the outside air. Thus, being warmer, that means that it will keep climbing, okay? Now, let's, let's say that the dew point of this mass of air is 11 degrees, okay? So once that this mass of air that we're talking about before gets to 11 degrees, it will condense and become a cloud. Thus, let's say it climbs, still climbs another 1,000 feet, it will reach the 2,000 feet mark, and in there, this mass of air will be bigger because it's expanding, and the temperature will be 11 degrees because it's still dry and it's going down. The temperature is dropping by 3 degrees every 1,000 feet. As you can see in this example at 2,000 feet, guys, and this again, it's crucial to understand, what will happen is that you will reach the dew point, thus the mass of air will, uh, will be uh, a cloud, okay, will condense and be a cloud, okay, in this example, now it's a cloud, so you can really see it visually, all right? And as you can see in here, the temperature of the mass of air, in this case a cloud now, and the temperature of the surrounding air is the same. Thus, what will happen is that since the weight of the mass of air and the outsider temperature, uh, the outsider temperature, yes, are the same, 
The mass over will stay there, will condense and will be there, will stay there, boom. Okay, do you won't have any other vertical movement because the temperature is the same. The mass over temperature in the outside air temperature is the same. Thus, once that mass over reaches condensation, it reach and it reaches the temperature of the outside air, it will stay there. It condensate, it will stay there. Okay? Beautiful. This is a stable environment, okay? As you can see, you're gonna have a low, uh, since you won't have any vertical movement of, uh, of air because the air, the temperature of the mass of air is the same as of the outside air, okay? You won't have any other vertical movement, okay? So you're gonna have low level clouds, like very, very thin clouds, and that's it, okay? Guys, this is very important to understand. The environmental lapse rate is two degrees every thousand feet, but this is a standard number. In real life, guys, the lapse rate, they change con constantly, okay? So the environmental lapse rate, the, the, the temperature change with the altitude of the at atmosphere can be one degree or can be three or can be five, depending on the day, but the standard is two degrees. So let's say that another day we start at 15 degrees at the mean sea level. However, at 1000 feet, your environmental lapse rate, instead of being two degrees as per the standard one, it's gonna be one degree. So let me make a correction in here. Here we go. Let's say that now in this example, instead of having two degrees, per uh, thousand feet, let's call it one degree, okay? And let's see what will happen to your, uh, to your uh, mass of air and your atmospheric stability, okay? So I change the color in here, I take the red one, Opa, here we go, so that's the red one, here we go, beautiful. So let's say that now the environmental lapse rate is one degree only, okay? Because this is not a standard environmental lapse rate, it's one degree, so what will happen is that at zero feet you're gonna have 15 degrees, 1,000 feet, you're gonna be 40 degrees, 2,000 feet, you're gonna be 13 degrees, two, uh, at 3,000 feet, you're gonna be 12, 11, 10, and 9 degrees, okay? This is the outside air temperature, okay? And let's say that the mass of air, it will stay the same, so the characteristic of the mass of air won't change, okay? So in order to understand, guys, because this is crucial, because in order to understand the, uh, the atmospheric stability, you need to make sure that you understand that this is it's all about environmental lapse rate and the lapse rate of the mass of air, okay? So let's do the, the, the example where we talk about the, uh, where we have an environmental lapse rate of one degree, all right? So now, beautiful. So if we come in here, guys, we start at zero, zero feet, 15 degrees, okay? Let's say we start at 17 degrees. Thus, this mass of air, the mass of air is warmer than the outside air. So it will start rise. So the, the temperature, the dry, the mass of air will decrease its temperature by three degrees every thousand feet. Thus, it will get to the first 1,000 feet and we'll have, it's gonna be in here, and 17 minus three is 14 degrees. So as you can see already, we reach the same temperature. So as you can see, the smaller the environmental lapse rate, the more stable will be the atmosphere. So for these reasons, we start with 17, the mass of air start climbing because it was warmer than the outside air temperature, but once it gets to the 1,000 feet, it was already at the same temperature of the, of the, of the, of the atmosphere, okay, of the air of the atmosphere. So it stays there. Thing. It will not even reach its new point because it cannot climb anymore and reach the 11 degrees needed to uh, condensate. Okay? So in this case, as you can see, it's stable because the vertical movement of the air mass of air will be suppressed almost. Okay? So it won't go anywhere there. All right? So this is very important to understand, guys. Stability and instability of the atmosphere, it's all about environmental lapse rate and the lapse rate of the air mass. Right, let's make another example. If you go on the next page, okay, that is an unstable atmosphere, okay? So let's analyze the environmental lapse rate. The environmental lapse rate, okay, the general temperature change with the altitude is four degrees Celsius, okay? In this case, we start at, as you can see in here, at zero feet, on the mean sea level at 15 degrees, 1,000 feet above we have 11 degrees. Why? Because the environmental lapse rate is 4 degrees per thousand feet. So this is a non-standard environmental lapse rate. Okay. So let's make the same example. So let's let's start with a, uh, the sun will warm up the sea and warm up the runway. Thus the mass of air that is on top of the runway. Let's say that we we just follow the, the example as before. Okay. Let's say that this mass of air will start at 17 degrees. Okay, beautiful. Let's have a look. We climb because this is warmer than the 15 degrees. Okay, it will climb and it will get to the first 1000 feet. This mass of air, okay, it will be in here and it's gonna have a temperature of 14 degrees. 
Thus, if you compare the temperature of the mass of air with the surrounding air, it's warmer. Thus, it's still lighter. It will climb another thousand feet, okay, and then at two thousand feet, this mass of air will get to the eleven degrees Celsius. If you compare to the two thousand feet temperature of the outside air, it's gonna be seven. Thus, the mass of air is still uh, warmer and lighter. But now, since we are 11, uh, 11 degrees, we actually reached our uh, condensation, our dew point. Thus, this mass of air will change, okay, will become a cloud now. So now we've got a cloud, the clouds will climb, will start to formate a cloud, okay, and we'll get to the 3000 feet, okay. At the 3000 feet, the temperature of the cloud will be 11 minus, so now we need to use the SLR because we are, the cloud is formatted, so we are saturated, okay, we are following this saturated lapse rate. So let's say we, the, cl the cloud will climb to the 3000 feet, okay, and what is the temperature of the cloud at 3000 feet? Let's call it 2 degrees, so 11 minus 2 is 9 degrees, okay, 9 degrees Celsius. If you compare to the outside air temperature, it's 3 degrees, thus the cloud is still warmer. So what will happen is that we keep climbing to the 4000 feet and another 2 degrees uh, colder, so the cloud will have 7 degrees and the outside air temperature will be minus 1, thus it's still warmer. So we keep climbing because the air, the air is always warmer and lighter. And that is the difference because on a stable atmosphere, the air mass at some point will become heavier and colder, thus it will stay there or will go down. In the an unstable atmosphere, the mass of air will be always warmer and lighter, thus it will climb. It will reach the dew point, it will become a cloud, and then we keep climbing, condensating as a cloud. Okay, so I really hope now you understand what is the difference between a stable atmosphere and a stable atmosphere. You understand the mechanism behind it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.